The basics of most teleological arguments appear to be that complexity exists, there is law and order responsible for generating the complexity, and the law and order is created intentionally by some consciousness higher than man. One of the counters that has been used against this chain of argument before is the idea that the universe does not come from law and order, but rather evolved from pure randomness over billions of years. Mathematically, this counter-argument is not a good one, and a key in pointing this out is this obscenely large number, 10 raised to the power of 500. That is a 1 with 500 zeros following it. We'd only use a number that big when measuring very large objects using very small units. And I believe the smallest units known today are what's called Planck units. They're derived from known limitations of the universe, like the discovery that nothing in a vacuum can exceed the speed of light. Therefore, it might be dangerous speculation to venture into units smaller than these. Now, to see why this 10 to the power of 500 is special, let's first realize that it's a number larger than the size of the observable universe measured in the smallest units of volume. Not only that, it's also larger than the age of the universe measured in the smallest units of time. In fact, if you take the product of both of these things, 10 to the 500 is still larger. To put it another way, 10 to the power of 500 is a larger number than the number of keystrokes you'd get if you made typewriters way smaller than electrons packed all of the giant empty cosmos we'll ever see with them and had them typing at pretty much the speed of light. It's a phenomenally large number. But that number isn't anywhere near as big as the number of possibilities you can get trying to type a book at random. If you want to generate a copy of Hamlet randomly without using a printing press or some kind of systematic shortcut, you're looking at having to overcome a number with hundreds of thousands of zeros, not just hundreds of zeros. Exploring the limitations we have on the universe, I think it's very safe to conclude that if the odds of something existing randomly is less than 1 out of 10 to the 500, then its existence involves a non-random process of some sort. And the sequences in genetics often involve even larger numbers than the sequences in writing books. I don't mess with physics or biology all that often, but even if in my ignorance my calculations are off, they are not so far off that the size of the large numbers and cosmology constants can come anywhere close to overrunning the size of the numbers in probability. In any case, it seems that since the universe time-wise and space-wise is relatively small compared to the huge set of possibilities randomness can generate, we're forced to conclude that the universe must possess some non-random laws and did not assemble itself from chaos without some kind of non-random help. So now we know why using the idea that the universe evolved slowly over time through pure randomness does not mathematically check out and why it's a bad rebuttal to the watchmaker argument. Some arguments against the watchmaker argument may be good, but the universe generating itself randomly over a long period of time is definitely not. So, as using a deity to fill in gaps in understanding is scientifically unacceptable, 
I would also argue that using randomness to fill in gaps in understanding should be unacceptable as well, at least in this particular case, because we ran the numbers and found out that randomness alone just doesn't compute.